recorded history, Sheffield FC was the first football club in the world. They were founded in 1857, but it was not until 1888 that the first football league kick started. England were the pioneers of domestic club competitions and this tradition was eagerly adopted by nations across the globe. With over a hundred years of domestic club competition concluded, the powerhouses of the beautiful game can be counted on one's digits or your fingers if you're being too selective. Think about football and a handful of names appear and these teams have accumulated wealth and silverware thanks to their brilliance on the pitch. In England, Manchester United lead the tally with 20 league titles. Liverpool are in close proximity at 18, a number which will turn once the 1920 Premier League season is concluded. The Reds have been that dominant this campaign. Arsenal with 13 domestic trophies also get a shout out. Everton and Aston Villa have nine and seven apiece, while upstarts Chelsea and Manchester City have six, the same number as Sunderland's tally prior to the Second World War. Elsewhere in Italy, Juventus have the greatest haul of Serie A titles with 35. Only six of these came before the Great War and currently they're on a run of eight successive titles. Milan Giants, AC and Inter have 18 apiece. Looking at Germany, one feels Serie A to be more competitive as Bayern Munich have claimed 29 Bundesliga titles, while the next highest, one FC Nuremberg, have nine. Borussia Dortmund have come closest to challenge the Bavarian powerhouse in recent history and they have eight domestic titles. And this brings us to Spain, the subject of this video. There was a time when the likes of Valencia, Athletic Bilbao and Atletico Madrid were prolific winners and serial title challengers. Those days are long gone. Real Madrid have opened up such a huge gap that it bewilders one just to look at their trophy haul. They've been crowned Spanish champions 33 times and came in second a further 23 times. Barcelona have been in close pursuit and the Catalan club have bridged the gap since the 90s. La Blaugrana have 26 La Liga titles to their name. Hello everyone and welcome to yet another exciting video on your favourite channel Goalside where we bring you some amazing content on a daily basis and make sure that staying at home doesn't make you forget about the beautiful game. In today's video we're going to discuss Barcelona and how they've turned the tide over Real Madrid. We're going to talk about how an unfancied academy graduate who only had minuscule experience as a coach ushered Barcelona into the best period of their history. But it's not just Pep Guardiola under focus. The Catalan club has a rich history and he's just the most recent catalyst of their dominance in Spain and Europe. And any discussion about Barcelona's success will be incomplete without discussing the work done by Johan Cruyff and the advice he's given to numerous Camp Nou management teams. La Liga is going to come into focus and so will Copa del Rey. Long before they were fighting for dominance in Spanish top flight football, Barcelona were perennial champions of the domestic cup competition. And on this note, it'll be worth our time to discuss the Catalans' famous run-ins in the Champions League for perspective into how they came out of Real Madrid's shadows and became giants of club football. It should be an enlightening topic for fans and neutrals alike, as we will be talking about eras of Barcelona's history and touch upon some key moments of their illustrious past. After all, the Blaugrana are more than a club, Mexican club. As always, please remember to subscribe to our channel, like this video and share it with your friends who feel that Barcelona might just have become powerhouses under Lionel Messi's influence. Maybe what we're about to show you might make them believe. The first La Liga winners and initial blitz. Barcelona were not always in the shadows of Real Madrid. It was the Catalan club who were the winners of La Liga's inaugural season. The four and a half month season had four participating clubs with a qualifying tournament. In the 18 match season, only two points separated them from the capital club, but it was enough for them to lift the trophy and etch their names into the annals of Spanish football history. They would come behind Athletic Bilbao, now Athletic Club, in the next campaign. And the season after it, they would finish in fourth place. They had a good squad, but one that could not negotiate results regularly. Consequently, a lot of games were drawn and points shared. However, in their infancy, it was Real Madrid who were unheralded, their record mocked upon. By the time Barcelona had lifted their first La Liga trophy, they were already accomplished in the Copa del Rey. They'd won the Spanish domestic cup competition seven times and would lift it the same year to mark their first league and cup double. Period of success after the war. The impact of the Spanish Civil War and World War II was visible on the region and the football club. Real life issues took precedence over sports entertainment. While Real Madrid thrived in this period, Barcelona lived in mediocrity. It was not until after the war that the Catalan club again came into prominence. Real Madrid had not been crowned champions before the Spanish Civil War, but were now the favoured team of Spanish dictator General Franco. They'd come in second and third place, while the Catalans were still having issues fielding a proper team. Their efforts started to bear fruit, 
and there were back-to-back -back title triumphs in 47-48 and 48-49 seasons. They were the best side in Spain with Valencia close second in both campaigns, capital clubs Atletico and Real Madrid finishing third on both occasions. Hailed as the team of the people and pitted against the generals team did not help their cause, but they had yet to bear the biggest punch from fate. While Atletico Madrid managed successive title claims of their own for the next two years, Barcelona came back strongly, adding two more to their tally. It's here that Barca's competition with Los Blancos became one-sided. They'd won four out of the last six domestic campaigns, but were dealt a severe blow. Alfredo Di Stefano's move to Catalonia was hijacked and he was paraded as a Real Madrid player. The Argentine would tilt the balance in Real Madrid's favour. They'd win four out of the next five La Liga titles, the Blaugrana finishing as runners-up on three occasions. Di Stefano was the leading goalscorer in these campaigns. Di Stefano or no Di Stefano? There is a reason that Di Stefano remained at the top of Real Madrid's goalscoring charts for all of 50 years. He was just that good. One of the initial complete forwards, he changed the turn on its head and set the template for how forwards should play. And alongside Ferenc Puskas, made a devastating striking partnership. Barcelona was supposed to have part of this partnership, but they were robbed. However, it did not stop them. They showed they could overcome adversity. And it was them who challenged and ended Madrid's glory, claiming their seventh and eighth La Liga titles, edging the capital club out of the picture as the most successful Spanish club. They beat Real Madrid 4-0 at home at the first time of asking and 3-1 the following year. Barcelona proved they were not going to be encumbered, but with the state actively working to sabotage the work you're doing, it's going to be a stiff task to accomplish. Johan Cruyff's arrival Barcelona were in disarray and could not get over the final hurdles, while Real Madrid raced up to 15 La Liga titles. On the other hand, Barcelona would end up runners-up 11 times. The Dutch maestro turned up and turned the tide. Cruyff could have opted for Real Madrid, but romantically chose Barcelona as he understood the plight of Catalonia. His arrival gave them a new lease on life, and he was instrumental in their 73-74 title triumph. The Catalan club would not be the same again. Barcelona did not win another La Liga title during his time there, but did manage to add to their Copa del Rey tally. They would win the cup competition in his last year at the club. It was not the silverware that was regarded, it was but the affection Cruyff had shown to the Catalan club. They were perennial bridesmaids, and Cruyff, at the peak of his prowess, had gambled on them. This connection only grew stronger during his stay at the Camp Nou. He would become instrumental in their next phase of silverware. Cruyff's return in the dugout. One calamity after another struck the Catalan club after Cruyff had departed as a player. Given his admiration for the region, he remained in touch, so it was a no-brainer when Barcelona approached him to take over in 1988. Real Madrid had managed their run of success and had claimed 22 league titles. Both Atletico Madrid and Athletic Club were closing in with eight title triumphs of their own. All the while, the Catalans managed to continue their run of second places, which now numbered 17 times. Cruyff revolutionised Barca with his total football philosophy and ensured that his ideals were also taught at the academy. This would also signal the beginning of La Masia's productive output, from which Barcelona continued to profit to this day. It was not until Real Madrid had claimed a further three titles that Barcelona would emerge as a sporting power in Spain. From 1990 to 94, they would win La Liga successively in four years. They would also break their European Cup drought under the Dutchman. Cruyff had broken Real Madrid's hegemony in Spanish top-flight football. Barcelona were not part of the chasing pack, but the trendsetters. La Porta and the return of Cruyff's philosophy. For every step that Barcelona took in the right direction, they would take two in reverse. Their success under Cruyff would be marked by infighting and signal another round of uneven results. They did manage to win La Liga under Louis van Gaal, but they lost their footballing philosophy, which they held dear since the Dutchman's arrival in the early 1970s. As president, Laporta would usher Barca in their next reign of dominance. He brought in Frank Rijkaard as Barcelona's coach in a bid to turn their fortunes around. The masterstroke continues to bear fruit to this day. La Liga success was achieved at the expense of Real Madrid and Valencia, and when Rijkaard's time at Camp Nou came to an end, he was replaced by another Cruyff disciple, Pep Guardiola. Guardiola was one of the first players to make their way from La Masia into Barcelona's first team. He was part of Cruyff's dream team and had Barcelona in his DNA. He built on the foundations led by Rijkaard and built Barcelona into the juggernauts they are today. During his four-year stint, he brought three La Liga titles and two Champions League trophies to Camp Nou, amongst a host of other trophies of smaller desire. Barcelona have not looked back since. 
Lionel Messi's coming of age from a La Masia graduate into the best player of all time has helped their cause as well. Blaugrana have closed in on Real Madrid's exploits, winning 10 La Liga titles in the last 15 years. Not only have they come out of Los Blancos' shadows, but also proved they are better than them.